Review. Hello, Spang Wagon fans. I'm Travis. And this is Rob. And we're here with another beer review. Beer review! Spankwagon.net. Stop that! I can so, do this all day. Yeah. So, Rob, what do we have? A new one from Austin. Oh. A brand new one. Uh, when I was at uh, Spax the other day, I was just browsing around and I just saw this completely brand new level I hadn't seen before. And then when I looked at it and I saw Austin, Texas, I was like, ding! Sold. Yes. So, this is. Scratch and Hippo. Scratch and Hippo. That, that was the other part that got me was the name. Uh, this is from Albert Brewery, like I said, here out of Austin. Yes. It's a Belgian style ale, mm. which, you know, I love my Belgians. So this was, uh, I'd actually talked with one of the guys at Specs, and they said they've only been around like two months now. Oh, wow. So this is completely brand new brand speaking, man, that's awesome. for the Austin area. And the only bad thing about it is its name is rep uh, reminiscent of the idea that maybe hippos also get crabs. Yeah, that would be bad. Freshwater crabs. Freshwater crabs. Alright, so we've got... Oh. There it is. Alright, so as you probably saw, the drink just spouted everywhere, like Old Faithful. And, yes. Um, yeah, there was a column of foam there, but then uh, some other shit went wrong. And so we actually get to smell yeah, it. Yeah, we might actually be able to get it without the bone now. Because we were afraid that we weren't going to be able to smell it because of the column of bone and everything, but... Hmm. Malt? That's about it. Just malt? Yeah. Huh. Bizarre. I'm... That's really Spartan. Yeah. That's... It's malt. Yeah. That's it's interesting. Maybe... Maybe it has, like, hidden flavors. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Oh, uh, right, there's that Bel you know, that Belgian color I like. Uh-huh. And wow, let's look at that. That's a shitload of carbonation right there. Yeah. Surprising, because we thought we'd mess it all. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Oh, look at that color. Oh, wow. It's pretty. Okay, note of caution for everybody. Be careful when you open this thing. It's a live wire. Yeah, it, it was... really is. I mean, that that's dynamite right there. Yeah. But I'm still intrigued by that color. That's a one... Yeah. What wonderful! It, it's funny how it almost goes to pumpkin orange, almost to a red. No, it's definitely red, right around there. The yeah. Bottom. It's almost like orangey at the bottom. Huh. But I'm still just getting malt. Yeah, still getting malt. So maybe their idea is that they do something really simple, but they do it really well. Yeah, maybe. It smells but good. Ma but man, that I'm still like looking at the carbonation. I mean, that's almost like. Almost like a soda. Yeah. I mean, it's still going. So now that the, the head's calmed down some, mm -hmm. I mean, this is... I swear I'm like watching a game of Puzzle Bobble go on here. I mean, it's just crazy. It's um, still going. It's amazing. Yes. So, shall we give it a try? Let's do it. Drink, bitches. Mm. Wow, that's carbonated. Holy oh. shit. Yeah. That's weird, um, it kind of has a like, kind of little metallic irony taste. Yeah, a little bit. Which you usually only get like when you drink out of the bottle. I mean, we still get that maltiness to it. Mm -hmm. Almost like a hint of rye as well. My problem is I'm not getting much else out of it. No. You can definitely taste the carbonation. It almost tastes like soda water, you know. Speaking of carbon or carbonation, it does kind of have, have a tendency to slide. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that was done after the fact. No, I, I definitely tasted the rye the last time. But I'm not getting much of the other flavors I normally get that, that I enjoy out of a Belgian. No, it doesn't seem like they added anything, which is pretty much what we assume from what, uh, from what we smell. I'm not getting anything that's a draw to this beer. I mean... It is still pretty solid. I mean, it does actually feel like you're drinking beer. Although, it actually, when you're drinking it, feels like a soda almost, so... Well, and maybe that's my thing. Um, Maybe it's actually too carbonated for Belgian. <coughs> Sorry, carbonation. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Belgian usually has like maybe a little bit of head at the top, but and even when you drink it, it doesn't. It's not active still. This, this, yeah, you don't feel it on with the Belgian. You don't feel it on your tongue most of the time. Yeah, this this almost drinks like sparkling champagne. Or something it, like yes. That, yes, it does. I mean, maybe they're just thinking out of the box or thinking outside the box. I well, know. I was gonna say if they had. Uh, if they had more of a flavor profile to it, like, say, like, if they had, like, a little bit of citrus or something like that, yeah. uh, even though you're really kind of going to, you know, Belgian white at that point, 
then maybe the carbonation would really add something to it, like you were drinking a champagne. Yeah. But that's gone. But then it, would, it really wouldn't be. It's just like you're drinking champagne. So. But since that's gone, I don't, I don't know what to think about this one. I mean, it's it's not bad. No. But I don't think it represents the style that well, quite frankly. And it, it is definitely simplistic. Um, as I said at the beginning, it's Spartan. But they did do it well. They did do what they Well, and I was going to say, for such a young brewery, I mean, that's not, I mean, it's not bad, so... I mean, it doesn't taste like, you know, taste terrible, which is good. Yeah. Um, but I would say they probably have a little bit more work to do if I had to, you know, if I had to offer any suggestions. And maybe calm down on the carbonation stuff. I mean, this yeah, is a bit fun. much. So on a scale of one to five, what would you give Scratch and Hippo? Uh, probably about a two. A two? Yeah. I want to say a two and a half because it's not a, it's not a bad flavor. No. Um, it just could use more work, I think. Yeah. To, to really represent the style well. I mean, it's a good start, don't get me wrong. I mean, they got the basics down, but, you know, keep going, take the, you know, take more steps forward. And I, I think if they do that, they could come out with a really phenomenal product. So, uh, two from Travis, two and a half for myself for Scratch and Hippo. So, I think this is one we might have to keep an eye out for. Uh, let, let's just hope they, this is just a starter and they continue to improve. Because yeah. I, I think we could probably see some good things if they keep going. Yeah, hopefully next round of beer reviews that we do, we'll get something like that. Right. Something exactly. else from them. From SteakWagon.net and um, a messy table and uh, a very interesting beer review. I'm Travis. And I'm Rob. And you're watching SpankWagon.net. .net! Belch bitches. Hello, SpankWagon fans. This is Travis. And it's Rob. And we're about to do... What the fuck is that? There's this a, is a beer review! There's a CD! Wait. God damn it, Justin. <laughs> oh, damn! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I did, did I get you? Yes, you did. Sweet! Yeah. 10 points, awesome. Um, no, no. <laughs>